We'll be extending the topic of load combinations to moment diagrams, and we'll arrive at the concept of moment envelopes. The difficulty with moment diagrams is that they're functions that are defined over the entire length of the member, and the load combination will apply at each point in the member. This will make the computation much more involved. We'll continue the example from the previous video. We considered load combinations having to do with dead, live, and earthquake load only. This is the frame that was used in the example. We had a vertical load for dead and live load. It was a uniform load over the beam. And we had a lateral load at the top of the frame for the earthquake load. The values that were used in the previous example are given in the table, and we'll continue using them here. We'll be focusing for this example on the bending moments on the beam. You may not yet be comfortable calculating bending moments in frames. Don't worry about that now. We'll take the bending moments as given quantities. So these are the bending moment diagrams that result from the dead load, from the live load, and from the earthquake load. I've indicated a couple expressions on the diagram so that you can identify familiar looking quantities. The peak of the bending moment due to the uniform load is indeed WB squared over 8, as would be expected for a simply supported beam. The maximum magnitude of the bending moment in the beam due to the lateral load is the force F that occurs at the pin times the length H between the pin and the beam. If you're not feeling comfortable with where these came from, once again, don't worry. Take these as the starting point. We'll work in two ways. We'll work in terms of the diagrams. We'll also work in terms of some tabulated values at various points along the beam. In this example, I'll monitor the beam values at the quarter points. It is often easier to do this only for some critical sections of the beam instead of every single point along the length of the beam. Taking, for example, the beam at the midspan, that is the location of 12.5 feet from the left end, we can identify the points for dead load, live load, and earthquake load on the diagram. So now you can see the correspondence between the moment diagram and the values in the table. Let's get started with the calculation. We'll do this over several different steps. We'll start by considering the load combinations 1.4 dead and 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. On the left-hand side is information that was already given, the moment diagrams, and the values at the quarter points. If I apply my load combinations, I arrive at the following moment diagrams. How do these come about? Let's go through it step by step. The moment diagram for 1.4 dead was obtained by taking the moment diagram for the dead load, multiplying by 1.4, and plotting that same diagram. The moment diagram for the other load case took 1.2 times the moment diagram for the dead load, 1.6 times the moment diagram for the live load, and plotting the resulting curve. Let's see this result in tabular form. We're showing here the two new columns for the new load combinations, and we'll look at one of the rows to see the correspondence. Again, looking at the midspan, we can identify the points of 7.8 and 23.4 for the dead and live load at the midspan. We can see the corresponding values of 10.9 and 46.9 for the two load combinations on the resulting moment diagrams. This is a good time to pause. Calculate the rest of the values in the table. Find those values in the plot. Make sure that you understand how we obtained the plot and how we obtained all the different values in the table. We'll move on to the load combination 1.2 dead plus or minus the earthquake load. We'll go through the same process of seeing where these two new curves came from. The top curve takes the earthquake load multiplied by 1, adds to that the dead load multiplied by 1.2 to get that sloped slightly concave down curve that's indicated. The other curve is taken by subtracting the earthquake load and then adding back in 1.2 times the dead load. We can once again see it in tabular form. We can look at the values at the middle of the beam, the values of 7.8 and 18 for dead and earthquake, and values of 27.4 and minus 8.6 for the two load combinations. Once again, pause the video, calculate the rest of the values in the table, find those values in the plot. Once you're done with that, 
start the video again. We'll look at the last set of load combinations. The curves, as you can see, are very similar. Hopefully by now you understand how the scaling and addition goes, so we won't look at that explicitly. In tabular form, these are the results. Again, we can identify certain points at the mid-span, the values of dead and earthquake, and the corresponding values for the load combinations. Once more, pause the video, calculate the rest of the values in the table, and find them in the plot to make sure you're following along. So now we've obtained six different moment diagrams, one moment diagram for each of the different load cases we're considering. What do we do with this now? And what must be done is to identify what we call envelopes of maximum and minimum moment. The envelope indicates either the maximum or the minimum value for each point. You'll notice that the envelope might incorporate information from one or two or more moment diagrams. Once we have the envelope, we can use that to design our structural member. In the table, the columns labeled min and max include either the smallest or the largest of the values given in the six columns to the left. We can identify these values on the plot. And so once again, and for the last time, pause the video, calculate the rest of the values in the table, make sure you can find them in the plot. And so we're arriving at the end. We'll do a little interpretation of the results. We've identified the maximum moment envelope, shown there in gray, the minimum moment envelope, sometimes called the maximum negative moment envelope. And we see that there are different moment diagrams that govern over different sections of the beam. Over most of the beam, the positive moment is governed by 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. On the remainder, the positive moment is governed by 1.2 dead plus earthquake. On the negative side, that envelope is governed by 0.9 dead minus earthquake. So in this case, three different load combinations determine the design moment for this one beam. Let's summarize. When we look at load combinations on flexural members, these load combinations must be computed at many points along the length of the member. This makes the calculations a little bit more tedious. The goal is to find either envelopes of maximum and minimum moments or maximum and minimum moments at a few critical sections in the beam. The advantage of the former is that you don't need to think about which are the critical sections, you just find all of the information. The advantage of the latter is that there's less work to do. Some tips as you're working on problems. There are a lot of additions and subtractions and multiplications, a lot of operations, so do your work in a spreadsheet. If you're working with envelopes, find the moment as a function of x and use the spreadsheet to calculate the values at many different points along the length of the beam. The moment as a function of x can often be obtained from beam tables. For difficult problems in practice, there's software that's available to help with this calculation.